what I was realizing is that uh, what you're in a, when you're in a team, actually, it really opens your mind. Uh, creativity is easier because you're bouncing ideas uh, off of each other, teaching each other, challenging each other. And um, yeah, it really opens your mind and, uh, and makes you ask more questions that you might have asked by yourself. Um, I did spend a little bit of time after Trustix uh, auditing as a team on Code Arena. Uh, on over two months, we made like 21K. Uh, we were four. We are still learning from each other and talking to each other every day. Um, definitely saw some value um, being in a team. Um, but then we kind of stopped because it wasn't uh, the return on investment wasn't that good, even if you were finding highs and and such. The competition was already starting to be not so worth it um, um, financially. But then uh, everyone went to their own private stuff. And, uh, and yeah, the thing is, when we stopped auditing as a team, I was still part-time auditing uh, by myself. It was around August. I really felt like there was a big wall. Uh, there's a lot of things I wasn't understanding, and it felt like unacceptable. Um, I mentioned DeFi. Uh, I was struggling to understand or even explain uh, what was happening in this space. I was auditing like a savage, <laughs> as I said. Um, didn't really realize it because, you know, with CTFs and technical stuff and technical bugs, you just feel like you read the code and, oh, there's this bug here, oh, reentrancy, I know how to find reentrances and stuff. But the process was wrong. Uh, the focus wasn't as it should have been, and the understanding definitely wasn't at the level it should have been. I had my talent. I could find a lot of bugs, uh, the low-hanging fruits or the medium-hanging fruits, but getting really creative or having some insights on, um, on knowledge, um, I didn't feel like I was there yet. So I stopped competing on Code Arena because I felt like I needed to, I needed to bootcamp myself again. Um, and I started going back to, going back or going for the first time for several things, uh, through the fundamentals. Like there are several YouTube channels like Findmatics, Smart Contract Programmer, Open Zeppelin Secure Development Series, uh, and there were the books, like uh, How to Defy Beginner, How to Defy Advanced, and I really tried to understand the classic protocols. That's actually something that Semichel um, encouraged in the beginning, but, but yeah, I kind of avoided that because the re return on investment was too big on just the technical stuff. Um, wasn't the case anymore when I when I stopped. And uh, yeah, I really felt like yeah I needed more information uh, to transform it into knowledge. So I started learning a lot. I started reading a lot more reports on Code Arena. Uh, asking a lot of questions. I'm lucky enough that one of the auditors uh, in the team um, is, uh, has been auditing for five years. It's the guy that found some people getting killed and such. <laughs> yeah, a, a long time auditor in the space. Uh, yeah, definitely impressive, uh, the, the kind of stories he has. Um, and uh, yeah, I still felt uh, while trying to digest these resources that I wasn't able to weaponize that knowledge. Um, it, felt, it felt like I was learning fast and I was getting familiar with things. I was understanding things, but how to apply those to auditing, you know? Like, yeah, how do you transition that knowledge? How do you use them because I didn't feel like if you put it put me on an audit uh, again uh, well I'd know more about stuff I could understand the protocol more but I still go back to my old ways of finding the technical bugs and the bad patterns as such 
um, which is nice uh, and I believe that's what makes you transition from a junior to to the level of, to the level above but but yeah something was missing and I did try to reach out to a lot of people asking and I don't feel like all people at least uh, those for those that came naturally can really explain how they are continued progressing uh, and I actually believe people that have have it easy um, are not the best teachers you know it's like the genetically gifted uh, uh, in weightlifting the bodybuilders and such uh, they are not the best coaches you actually want someone who can take some someone who is struggling and help him break through the plateau um, during that time, I did get uh, an audit uh, with Spearbit, the one with OpenSea, and I learned a lot. Uh, it was quite nice because, yeah, you, you get impressed by how the lead security researchers are doing things. I got to see their process, how they put some to-dos at uh, some places uh, that felt vulnerable and uh, how they could get things right even like this uh, you get to see the approach and it was inspiring and i learned a lot but i still felt like something was missing and then why academy happened and i do believe why academy was a turning point um, and actually uh, what was the turning point is mostly, or mostly the videos that are public on the Y Academy channels, uh, because there were several, well, famous people like Tincho, Gerard, Joran uh, Hönig, and such that, that were giving their speeches, and um, and yeah, some some of the things they said kind of. Yeah, I could relate to that and they resonated and I understood that I wasn't, I really wasn't approaching things like I should. Do you have any questions already? Because no, no. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, go, go continue. Uh, yeah, I want to hear about um, the Y Academy stuff uh, because um, I actually recently um, found those videos as well. I found them super helpful and <laughs> it sounds super like you, you did as well. Uh, like they only recently released them, so I only, I only watched them like last month. So you you watched them last year, so that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, what happened? Um, yeah, I already watched uh, watched uh, in the past several videos from Teen Show and stuff. Uh, several people saying how they were auditing, like uh, you know, Sam Citizen. Uh, he finds the things and then tries to find a tainted path to the source going backwards that way and yeah that works quite well for him it wasn't working for me <laughs> not that well at least um but yeah there was this video uh where they were telling how several famous auditors well good auditors at least were auditing and uh and yeah, there, there was this think first approach. There were three approaches. The think first and then try to find your way to the source, which is quite often the user input or uh, an odd state. And um, then there were two other ones. There was breadth first search and depth first search. With my background as a developer, well, I love <laughs> seeing BFS and BFS again. Um, but yeah, there are some people that actually uh, take the code uh, and uh, they dive deep first. When there's a function call, they go into the internal function and try to understand everything and build some mental maps, but detailed mental maps as they go. And uh, yeah, they write down some questions as they are going. And some others that go wide first meaning that they make assumptions and yeah that's pretty much what i was doing but not exactly because between that video and another one when tincho yeah th th that's stupid because he just said three words uh but he said line by line 
fact is there there are some obvious bugs that you shouldn't miss but sometimes get get caught really late in the audit processes even could be missed by famous firms but line by line and between that and uh, the breadth search and something I was applying at my previous job, you know the concept of brainstorming, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we created a concept called Q-storming. And it came from the fact that when you're giving answers, you're actually closing your minds and making assumptions and... Yeah, you're pretty much closing your minds, but, but when you're asking questions, you're opening it. So we were having, as a team, these sessions where we were forbidden from giving answers on, hey, let's do that, or if we do that, that could happen. We only had the right to, to write questions. And the thing is, questions really do open your mind. And that's where all that clicked. Uh, when, even when you're reading a report, you should apply this concept of opening your mind with questions and go line by line. Uh, and what felt like I didn't catch uh, why it should have been obvious is you shouldn't focus on the answers. You shouldn't focus on on the bugs or on the findings, well, at least for me. You shouldn't do that. You should focus on the questions. And the question is not written on audit reports. When you're talk taking something complicated and you're debugging and playing around with, you're actually going back to the question. And that's not something that's written in audit reports. So really, it changed my way of reading reports and auditing. You need to find the questions. Uh, when there's a bug, you don't say, oh, okay, there's this bug. When you're reading a line of code, oh, okay, it's doing that. Oh, okay, it's doing that. You actually need to challenge by asking questions. And the more creative you get and the deeper you can get between answering your own questions by researching similar code bases or others and then asking other questions and down the rabbit hole uh, you go. And and I started applying this concept everywhere. And really, when you are reading uh, an audit report, and instead of just saying, oh, OK, this bug can happen, you actually go back to the question that the auditor could have asked uh, himself or herself. You can actually weaponize that knowledge. And when you see something similar on another code base, you get to ask that question and find another path. Not just that you've learned about a bug and how to find it on such project. I definitely think like asking a lot of questions uh, during the audit is a great way to just open your mind and dig a bit deeper into code. And I participated in a block on uh, Securium and also uh, an order on Sparebit. And both of those audits, there were a lot of questions asked by people um, during the audit. Um, actually, um, Rajiv participated in both of them, so I guess um, that's why. Uh, yeah, like just either disproving or proving what is being asked just um, sort of forces you to dig a bit deeper into the code, and it kind of relates to uh, what Trust said in my previous video, where uh, if you, uh, like, the more you understand the code base, um, the, the issues that are more interesting and a bit... Uh, harder to find or start to um, be uh, more clear to you the deeper your understanding is. So, yeah, I, I think that um, your queue storming uh, is a very interesting concept um, that you mentioned. Yeah, definitely. And um, actually, trust also, yeah, there are several proverbs <laughs> that comes uh, naturally from those things. But uh, I, I feel like his definition of uh, slow is move and smooth is fast because it feels like what he did uh, is not trying to do everything at once and uh, yeah accumulating a lot of data and uh, connecting the dots and uh, getting creative with them he actually even started by reading the documentations back and forth going into details and uh, building his foundations 
that way. I'm not sure I could have done that um, because that would have been too many details at once. Uh, but he's definitely experienced in going deep in stuff and and drawing a mental map of things and uh, that's quite inspiring and I believe people that do better going deep first uh, well, that's, that's just my guess um, uh, people like that and other people that actually need uh, to make the assumptions you know, even the fact that, that there's a function call and you get to make assumptions means that you get to make a lot of questions you get to, with the Solidity Visual Developer plugin write about well i guess it does that check if it does that uh, does it do that uh, is there a return value no, no, no. you are not obligated to write everything but yeah i should definitely develop the the questioning mind uh, to, to open your mind and in the beginning uh, when i started doing that uh yeah it, it felt slow um but you know it's like it's like uh, having a very big checklist, and yeah, I even asked C. Michel, uh more than a year ago if he was using a checklist, and he said that in the beginning he was, but then he outgrew them. That's a question you can find on Securium's Discord, it still exists if you scroll up. And um, yeah, that's kind of like it. It will take time, you will have a checklist, and you will take time to answer yourself but with experience it will go faster and uh, when you've become an experienced auditor well you will have like a million questions in mind and answer them very fast and and then see some patterns and i believe this is how you train your auditing muscles and this is what i was missing how to train my auditing muscles instead of just knowing about bugs Mm, yeah, that's a very interesting approach. Um, definitely, like, just asking the questions and then forcing yourself to dig a bit deeper. And I guess, like, the the point about the checklists, um, I also feel similar to that. Like, uh, I used to have a checklist as well. I had, like, a massive um, ch uh, notes in Joplin where I had all the findings um, I noted down from previous audit reports on Code Arena. Um, yeah, and I kind of just... Um, as you like review those notes and it becomes more familiar to you, um, you just sort of naturally know them, right? As you look through the code, like it'll, like a question will pop into your mind. Oh, that's like from a previous finding. Is this possible? Uh, and then you, you you can creatively think of more and more questions um, to to poke at and look uh, through. Um, so you kind of like almost uh, make up a checklist on the fly um, as you audit the code. Um, at least that's sort of how I um, found it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, I believe, when you've got, when you've managed to weaponize the, the knowledge because it's become second nature. You, you can just feel it at some point. And I know some very good experts can't explain that because it just feels natural and like it came with experience. But how do you train that muscle? And yeah. that really depends. It might have seen, might have been obvious to just say what I said, um, but in fact, no, it's not. And uh, that's actually a strategy. Yeah, it's it's interesting how, like, you just hear some one sentence um, during a video from someone, and then it sort of really opens your mind um, on how you um, approach problems and how you um, do stuff. Um, I, I guess some things just sort of resonate with each person differently. And, uh, you know, once you hear that, hear that perfect, you know, way of describing something that resonates with you, then, yeah, suddenly everything makes sense. And then um, you, you break through that plateau, right? <laughs> but then you feel stupid because it just feels so obvious. But, yeah, you know, when you can explain something simply in simple terms, you've really understood them. And it feels easy, but yeah, getting to that point of understanding is not. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. 